In this video, I'm going to be going over some CISSP exam tips that all CISSP candidates should know before taking the test. I'm Andrew Ramdial, and I've been teaching CISSP courses over the last 15 years, and I'm also an instructor here at TIA. So let's get started. Uh, I have come up with three things that I think all CISSP candidates should know before taking the exam. The three things are, number one, your knowledge base, number two, your mindset, and number three, test taking techniques. Let's elaborate on all three of them. So, you're going in to take a CISSP exam. The first thing you must have is an amazing knowledge base. You have to know the materials inside out. How do you get that? Common questions to hey Andrew, how do I get this knowledge base? Well, read a good study guide, take a good course, like my course, that where I go through all the topics in depth. You must have the knowledge. You have some great study guides in the market, and most of them are very good. Whether it's the official study guide from Cybex, um, the all-in-one from Sean Harris, um, and a few others. Uh, but those two come to mind right away. So this is a really good study guide. I have nothing against them. I think they did a great job. Uh, and if you're the author of them, more to you. I'm an author also. I just didn't write a CISP study guide. Maybe one day I will. But you got to get your knowledge base right. You can't go into the exam not knowing, like for example, the seven layers of the OSI model, or not knowing what the SDLC is, not knowing certain laws and regulations like GDPR and HIPAA and PCI, right? Not knowing SOC audits and all this good stuff that they cover, not knowing, you know, what comes to mind encryption, like not knowing the SSL handshake or the difference between symmetric and asymmetric. So if you don't have the knowledge base, there is no way you can pass this test. You have to acquire that knowledge base. And this is the part of the exam study and process that takes up most of your time as you actually go through and you learn all the topics. Because if there's one thing you're going to hear a lot in CISSP classes, it's a mile long. It's not very deep. They say an inch deep. It's not very deep, but man, it's a mile long. When I teach CISSP, there are days I'm teaching you from cryptographic algorithm to door locks. It's a pretty... Pretty, pretty broad thing there. So that's number one, right? You gotta have, you gotta get your knowledge base. Now, the next two are just as critical because I've met so many students over the years that have failed the exam be before they have come to my class. And the problem they had was they memorized the study guides. They went through the study guides, they know the material well, and they still don't pass. In fact, a few days ago, I was speaking with a student and he told me that he had just failed the exam and he failed it pretty badly. He got six domain below proficiency and he got one domain near proficiency and he had just passed one. Now remember for this exam, you must pass all eight domains. If you fail any of those domains, you fail the test. Remember, remember that. So don't concentrate on one and forget the other. So I told him, well, you know what? Uh, did you review your study guide? Or I, I, was, I should say I was asking him, did you review your study guide? And he's like, yeah, Andrew, I know it well. I went through the study guide, I, I'm going to go over it again, and I'm like, nah, you're doing it wrong now. If you studied really well, and you, you, do, you didn't pass, and you're going back to read the study guide again, but as you're reading it, you already know what it says, it's not going to help you pass again. You need a different approach. And the other two things, or tips, is what you need. You need to change your mindset. And you need to improve your test-taking skills. So let's talk about the second one, your mindset. I told this gentleman, you need to improve, you need to have the right mindset. So the mindset that everyone, you've probably heard and everyone says, is you need to think like a manager. But what does that mean, right? That's, I've read this so many times in different forms and different people saying, oh, to pass, you need to think like a manager. But no one really defines that, right? No one, no one really says what that means. So I'm going to define it for you. A manager sees the sum of all components. A manager sees everything, not just one thing. The problem with techs that fails this exam. Now, nothing against tech. I'm here. I'm a tech just like you. I have 62 certifications, most of it in security and pen test and stuff. Uh, so yes, I'm a super tech too, right? Um, the problem with being a tech in this exam and why techs are going into this exam. And I know you're smart. 
I know you're very smart. As a tech, more to you. You are a smart person. Uh, I, I put programmers on a pedestal. That's not something I'm very good at or, or ever want to do. And if that's you, more to you, man. But if you're a tech, the problem with you is you see the world as a full solution. You're always looking to give a direct answer that answers the question. And that is not what managers do. You see, to think like a manager, you must have a broad scope. You must see everything. You must see the whole picture. You can't see a single thing. The problem with text is they're very narrow focus. They want to give a direct answer. So thinking like a manager, the tip goes like this. The mindset of thinking like a manager on a CISSP exam and applying it to a question is basically, if you're doing a question and you get choices where multiple of them sound correct, the answer is the one that does them all. That's the manager's answer. You ask him, how does that work? Well, imagine you're doing a question and you start reading the choices and A, B, C, and D is correct. You're like, man, which one do I choose? So a technician would go and choose the answer that uh, they feel is correct, that answers directly to the question. But that's not the answer. The answer is the one that did them all. I'll give you an example. Let's take a look at a question that I wrote for you guys. Let's take a look. So. When storing personally identifiable information, which of the following should the security manager be most concerned with? A, data location. B, data access methods. C, laws and regulations. D, data encryption. So let's stop right here. Let's take a look at this question. When storing personally identifiable info, so pie, so pie information, right? What should you what should the security manager be most? Now you see this word most, you're going to see this word most and primary and least and best all throughout your test. When you see that word most, you should think to yourself automatically, multiple of those choices are correct. So when storing PI, which of the following should be the most concerned to you? Location, data access method, laws and regulation, data encryption. So if you're a tech, what would you go with? And if you're a manager, what would you go with? Ask yourself this, which one of those choice does them all? The correct answer here is, did you get it? Did you get it? Hopefully you got it. It's C, laws and regulations. Now you may be saying, hopefully you guys got that. If you're saying, no, it's not. It's data encryption or data location or data access methods. The answer is C. You know why? Because C does A, it does B, and it does D. Laws and regulation when storing PII, especially things like GDPR, will dictate where the data can be stored. It'll dictate how the data can be accessed. It'll dictate maybe even the type of encryption to be used. It may say it has to be done with 256-bit, not 128-bit encryption. So C is doing A, B, and D. Hopefully that made sense to you. So apply this tip, right? So anytime you get to an exam question, you have multiple choices that are correct. You got to keep your manager hat thinking. You got to see a broader perspective. You can't be so narrowly focused. You have to start seeing things from that broader perspective. The moment you start selecting really specific answers, uh, that means you're probably not going to pass. Now, this tip has helped many students. Uh, and if you had selected, I, I want you to ask yourself this. Before I gave you the tip, which answer would you have chosen? I know a lot of people would have gone with data encryption. A lot of people think, oh, if I'm storing PII, I need to encrypt it. Well, yes, as a tech, I think I would do that. But as a manager, I think they're more concerned about laws and regulation. Okay, let's get to the third, th third tip now. The third tip I'm going to tell you is the, is the test taken technique. You got to make sure that you have the right test taken technique. That is a whole bunch of different test taken technique I'll go through in the class with you, but I'll give you one of them right now. So one of the test taking techniques that I give to students is going to be if you're doing one choice, you're not doing the other. So if you're doing A, you're not doing B, C, and D. If you're doing D, you're not doing A, B, C in real life. You see, on this exam, you're going to get questions where you, the choices are all correct and you're saying to yourself, well, A is good and B is good. I'm going to tell you this. Ask yourself this question. If this was a real life scenario and you can only do one of those choices, like if you do A, you ain't doing B, C, and D at all, what would it be? 
All right, think about that. What, what would that be? Let's take a look at a question to apply this theory. Okay, next question. Which of the following control should an organization implement to best prevent users from being infected with malware? So let's break the question down. Best, it's got this word best going on. I read the word best, I know there's gonna be multiple correct answers. Best prevent users from being infected with malware. Anti-malware software, user training, firewalls, host-based IDS. So you get a question like this. Number one, you gotta start eliminating things. The question says prevent. IDSs does not prevent anything. They can detect an, an infection in a, in, a, in a computer, but it's not gonna prevent. So now you have other controls that are there. Anti-malware software, well, that's good too. User training and firewalls. I think those three answers may work. A firewall may block viruses from coming through the network gateways. Anti-malware software, like antivirus software, can block the firewall from being infected to the computer. And user training can teach Bob not to click, not to click on the link, right? So what do we do? Do we install antivirus software, teach Bob not to click on links, or do we put or do we have firewalls? All of these are correct. And in your organization right now, I'm pretty sure you have all three. And that's what you're using to prevent users from getting infected with malware. And that's what makes this exam difficult because all three of those choices is what you're doing and you're stuck on the question. So I'm gonna ask you this. If you're, if you guys are watching this video, I'm gonna ask you a straight question. I'm gonna ask you, if you had one thing to do, what would it be? Don't, uh, don't think you're gonna do any of the other three. Uh, sorry, other two. So if you do one, you're not doing the other. Imagine you go to work the next day and it's like, okay, we got to do one. And if we do one, we're gonna erase the rest. So if you do antivirus software, you're not doing no more user training and no more firewall. If you're doing firewall, you're not doing any more training, you don't have antivirus software. This is the mindset I need you to have. The answer here is user training, correct. Here's why. User training, first of all, is more of a preventive measure. You see, user training, if Bob does not click the link, the, the machine will have never been infected. Antivirus software, anti-malware software will clean the machine when it gets infected. A firewall, yes, may stop the, the virus from even getting into the network, but somebody probably has to initiate that. User training, if your users are trained well, it's more than likely gonna prevent any malware from ever getting into your network because users are aware of where to go and what to do on the internet and what links not to click on. Okay, so that's just a quick tip there. You know, this tip of if you're doing one, you're not doing the other has helped so many of my students pass their exam. I've gotten some amazing email where people say, Andrew, this tip worked well or worked wonders for me. So is the one about thinking like manager, choosing the vaguest answer, choosing the most. The answer that includes the others has helped many of my students. I have many more other tips. We'll be going over them in class. Okay, so just a quick recap before I leave you. You want to pass the CISSP? Make sure your knowledge base is good. Make sure you study well. Make sure you understand the concepts. Number two, you want to make sure that you think like this manager, right? You got to have the mindset. Don't go in there without the mindset. And number three, you need to have good test, take, test taking techniques. You combine all three of those, and I'm pretty sure you're going to ace your exam on the first try.